Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. This is Wendy. Today we're going to be doing four Dollar Tree DIYs for your farmhouse fall home decor. If this is your first time here, welcome, and I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below, as well as the little bell right next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. If you like these projects, don't forget to give them a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think, and now, without further ado, let's get started. For our first project, we're going to be using a melamine dinner plate, saucer, and bowl, and then the handle from a children's shovel, and then some Waverly White chalk paint. I'm going to be making a two-tier tray, so I'm using the bowl as the base by turning it upside down and then to measure and see what the height is that I want between the first and second tier, I just experimented with the height level with different bottles and jars and glasses. So once I determine how tall I want it, I'm going to unscrew the shovel from the handle and then I'll measure that and cut that down and then I'm using the end piece that has the rounded finished edge of the shovel as the top part that'll go on top of the tiered tray. So I took my handle outside and cut these down using my miter saw and then I'm going to take some sandpaper and make those rough edges all nice and smooth so I can whitewash it. So to do that I'm going to use my Waverly White chalk paint and just brush it on there and then wipe it off and I'm using a makeup sponge to get it on there but you can see it was a little bit dull without the white on there so you can see the difference here. So now I'm going to take my Milwaukee drill and I'm going to carefully drill a hole right into the middle of the bowl, the saucer, and the dinner plate. And this is made out of melamine, so it's pretty hard, but you have to just be patient and it'll eventually go through and you don't wanna crack it by pushing too hard either. The good thing about this drill, and I'll have this listed in my Amazon store, is that you can just pop out the drill bit and replace it with the Phillips head screwdriver and it makes it super easy if you're doing different jobs. So since I didn't have a second pair of hands handy, yeah, hands are handy. <laughs> I just took some glue and put those together and then lined up the holes. And then I'm going to take my long dowel and I'm going to drill in my screw just a little bit, kind of like a pilot hole, so that it'll be easier for me to drill it into my plate and my base. So once I get that in, I'm going to screw in my top saucer into that same dowel on the other side. And I also gave that a pilot hole. And this is where you should stop and your plates will be secure. However, I did not stop there and went a little too far and this is what happened. So just make sure you don't over tighten it. So now I'm going to take the top part of my dowel and I'll use a drill bit to drill into that so that I can cover this and put it on top over my screw and you can't see it and then I'll hot glue that to the top. So here it is all done and I think it turned out really cute. I'm kind of second guessing my decision to whitewash the dowel because I think it would have been really pretty with that natural wood as well. I just had it in my mind and then once I did do it, I was thinking, hmm, I kind of liked it the other way. But I love how this turned out and I love that I didn't have to paint anything because this is a set that Dollar Tree always has, or pretty often anyway. And because we didn't paint it, it'll be food safe so you can place your cookies or your muffins or dinner rolls for your Thanksgiving dinner on top of it. And so not only is it pretty, it's functional too. So I love how it turned out and I hope you guys like it too. For our next project, we're going to be using a few pairs of men's socks in coordinating colors and patterns, a twig from outside, some black wire, some random scrap greenery from Dollar Tree flowers, some embroidery floss and a large eyed needle, and then some polyfill or some kind of stuffing. I got this from an old pillow. And so we're going to be making some mini sock 
pumpkins. And so I'm gonna take my socks and cut both of them at the same time, just above the heel. And then I'm gonna take my embroidery floss and weave that in and out at the top part. And then once it comes around to the other side, I'm gonna take that and gather it and pinch it off and then tie it off. And then I'll turn it inside out and that'll be the bottom of our pumpkin. And so the neat thing about using patterned socks is that when you turn them inside out, it's the opposite of the finished side. So it has a completely different look and it has a lot of texture. And I just thought that was really cute. So then I'm gonna take my stuffing and stuff it into my sock. And then I'm gonna take some more of the embroidery floss and go in and out and do the exact same thing that I did on the bottom, except this time, instead of cutting it off, I'm gonna take my needle and stick it in through the top and come out of the bottom. And so it's a little tricky and a little hard and I end up putting a piece of wood underneath because when you turn it over, you can shove it down and your needle will pop out. I ended up pricking myself with it too. And so you're gonna see a little bit of blood in a minute. <laughs> And so anyway, we're just gonna do that. And every time we go around, that's gonna be the lines of the pumpkin. So you'll pull it really tight and then just keep going all the way around. One thing that made it easy was because each of these different pattern socks has either lines or dots or something. So you could keep the distance equal every time you would make that round. And then once you're done, when you go back through the bottom a final time, you're just gonna knot that off and make sure that it's all nice and secure. And then I'm gonna take my twig and decide how tall I want that. And then taking my big fat cutters, I'm gonna cut that down and then I'll put some hot glue in the middle and then add my stick to it. And then I'm gonna take my black wire and wrap it around something. You can use a pencil or I was using this twig and then I'm making the tendrils and then I'm gonna wrap it around the twig and then do the other side and then just place those wherever you want. So now I'm gonna take my leaves and I like these because there were three and I ended up taking them and cutting them apart after a while. And just like with any project, the more you do, the better you get and the quicker you get at it. So you learn the little tips and tricks that make it a little bit easier. So once I put my leaves on there and got all of my different pumpkins ready and I made them in different sizes and shapes by changing the amount of stuffing I put in there, and my leaves were a little too green, so I decided to take some chalk paint in Nimbus, which is a really light gray that I thought would go good with this, this color palette. But it also made it look a lot like lamb's ear and gave it that real soft touch with the green showing through. And if you remember, I used blue embroidery floss to make the lines and it did show a little bit. So I took a black Sharpie and made those black because it did show and I didn't have any black, so I had to make do. So now I'm gonna take this Dollar Tree basket and it's so pretty and it's in gold and I'm gonna take my Krylon Fusion all-in-one spray paint in matte black and I'm just going to take it outside and give it one coat of that spray paint but you can use whatever you want whatever you have on hand I just like the finish of the matte black and so here it is all done I put all of the little guys inside of the basket and one on a little pedestal this isn't my usual color palette but I think it's so sweet and cutie patootie and anytime anything's real small and fun size, I think it's just adorable and I hope you guys like it.
For our next project, I have three cans. I have some chili beans, some diced tomatoes, and my lunch chicken noodle soup. I didn't want to waste it, so I added some onions and olives and made some chili beans for the kids who were spending the night on Grandparents' Day. And so <laughs> I wanted three cans that look good together so that they were staggered, a tall one, a medium one, and a short one. So this was the easiest way to do that. So then I'm gonna wash out and take the labels off of my cans, and then I'm gonna use some green, white, and black grow grain ribbon, some buffalo check ribbon, three bendable sponge rollers, or you could use twigs for your stem, some green and white pit berries, some raffia, and then I'm running low on my orange pumpkin chalk paint, so I'm gonna have to mix my own by using crimson and maize. And so I did this the exact opposite way that you're supposed to. I had a viewer tell me that you're supposed to do the light color first and then add the dark to it. So I ended up having to make a little more than I needed to, but I'll put this away and use this probably for the rest of fall. <laughs> so now I'm just gonna use a paintbrush and paint my cans. And I gave these two coats and I'm gonna paint the bottoms because those are gonna be actually our tops of our pumpkins. And so I actually liked the way it looked after only one coat because then some of the tin can was still showing through, but you can do it either way you want. And then I'm gonna take some chalk paint in truffle and I'm gonna paint my green stems. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and cut the foam part of the rollers. And then I'll take my wire cutters and cut the inside part that is what makes them flexible and bendable. And I'm gonna make one small one, one medium one, and one large one for each of my cans. So now I'm gonna take some Waverly Wax in white, and I've never used this before, but I found it at Walmart, and that's where I get all of my Waverly paints and waxes and all of those fun supplies when they have them. And I'm just gonna brush that on and wipe it off just like I do with my regular antique wax. But I was really liking the way it looked just even without wiping it all the way. If I did get a little heavy handed, I would wipe it off, but it just gave it a really pretty rustic look and I like the way they turned out. So now I'm gonna take my stems and hot glue those to the tops of my cans and where I had cut them originally, there was a little green peeking out. So you just wanna to touch that up. And if anything comes off while you're decorating them, you can always just touch it up at the end once you have them decorated. And so then I'm gonna take those stems and kind of get them a little crookedy so that they're nice and cute and tilted. So now to decorate the tops, I'm gonna to start with my buffalo check ribbon and I'm just gonna dovetail both ends and make strips and I'll see how large I wanna make them on each of my cans. So then I'm gonna lay those all out and then I'm gonna take my, is it raffia or raffia? I don't know, but I'll call it stringy hay. I'm gonna take my stringy hay <laughs> and just wrap it around a couple of times and make it all nice and messy and then I'm gonna take some jute twine and wrap it around there and tie it in a knot. And then I'm gonna add some grow grain ribbon in all three colors, the black, white, and green. And I'm gonna dovetail the edges of those and make sweet little piles of cuteness. And then I'm gonna take some more jute twine and wrap it around those little bundles. So now I'm gonna make the tendrils out of this pipberry garland and I'm gonna tie it into the jute twine and then I'm gonna use a pencil to make those little curly cues that you see me do so often. And then I'm gonna fluff out my sweet little bow and get it all cute and messy and you're done. 
and here's how they turned out and I think these are so stinking cutie patootie and they cost next to nothing because you just are using the cans and you got lunch out of it and so just with their scrap ribbon you could do this and they're just so fun it could go anywhere in your fall decor so I love these and I hope you like them too For our final project, we're gonna be using a Dollar Tree thankful platter, a family wood sign, and then a Sharpie that I get from Walmart, some Waverly chalk paint in ink and white, or black and white, and then also from Walmart, this orange allium bush for $3.47 and a boxwood stem for 97 cents. And all I'm gonna do is use my Annie Sloan paintbrush and I'm gonna use my white chalk paint to paint my entire tray. And I gave this a couple of coats so that I was sure that there was none of the writing or the orange peeking through. And my sweet friend Corey over at Crafted by Corey recommends that you paint in the opposite direction on your second coat to get a better coverage. I'll have her channel listed in the description box below and she just started her channel about three months ago. So I would love if you would go over to her channel and check her out and give her some love. So after my platter is completely dry, I'm gonna take my black Sharpie and I'm gonna write the scripture Ephesians 3, 14 and 15. And it says, for this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. And so the family part is gonna be my sign, which I'm gonna paint black in just a second. So I wasn't really sure what kind of font I wanted to use and I didn't know if I wanted to do all capitals or lowercase. So I decided to just have fun with it and I did some letters in capital and some in the lowercase just to give it a little bit of cuteness and whimsy. One thing I did do wrong is I thought I had it perfectly figured out how it was gonna be centered at the top of my platter but I started a little bit too far to the left. So if you do this project, start a little bit to the right. I mean, I guess it depends on the size of your writing too. So anyway, maybe you should just do it in pencil first. <laughs> So then I put my family sign in the place where it's eventually gonna go so I would know where to write the rest of my scripture at the bottom. And then I'll write Ephesians 3, 14 and 15 at the bottom curve of the platter. So this is such an awesome scripture because the Greek word for family is patria. I don't know how to say it right, but it's derived from the Greek word for father, which is pater. Again, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but the point being, it's saying that Paul, who wrote this scripture, kneels before the Father, obviously God, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. Well, family is taken from that Greek word, patria, which is the Greek word for father. So in every family, God is the derivative. And that just gives me chills. I just think that's so cool. So now I'm gonna take the jute twine off of the back of the family sign, and I'm gonna take all the little bits out of there so that it will lay flat on my tray once I glue it down. And then I'm gonna take some sandpaper first because I learned my lesson the last time, but I'll learn another lesson here today with this portion too. So I'm gonna sand that down and get all the ickies off, and then I'm gonna take my chalk paint in black and I do the edges first because there's a lot of them and a lot of insides. And so this way I can hold it while I'm doing that inside work. And then I'm gonna take it and paint the face of it completely black. So another lesson that I learned is that you really have to get the paint off that overflows from when you're doing the sides. I thought I was, but my eyes just aren't what they used to be. And so I didn't see that there was still some kind of building up at the edges. You'll see it. I'll show you guys later so you can see what my mistakes were so that you don't do them because you know you are supposed to do as I say and not as I do. <laughs> So now I'm going to take my hot glue and glue that down really quickly so that it doesn't dry at the 
first part where you do it by the time you get to the end and then place it on your tray. So now I'm gonna take some of the boxwood greenery from Walmart and these are 97 cents. Did I already tell you guys that? Anyway, I'm gonna put a couple of sprigs on each side and hot glue those down. And then I'm gonna take one of these allium pieces and put that right in the middle. And that's all there is to it. And here it is all finished and this is definitely my favorite for today I love the black and white and then just hitting it with that one pop of color always just makes my heart so happy and of course anytime I'm seeing the Word of God placed somewhere in my house I like it everywhere but that always makes things even better you can see my little areas against the sides there where they're a little puffed up but you can't see it from far away, but when you're close up, you really can. But anyway, I love how it turned out and I hope you guys like it too. In fact, I hope you guys enjoyed all of these projects. And if you did, don't forget to give them a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram under White Sparrow Living. If you're not already, please hit that subscribe button down below as well as the little bell so that you can find out every time I upload a new video. I hope everyone has a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye!